Hi guys, welcome or welcome back. Thanks so much for joining me. It's that time of the month again. Not that time, it's challenge review time. So like normal, this is where we sit down and we discuss the previous month's challenge entries. Last month's challenge was the white challenge. So you had to go out and photograph something that was white. Now my little helpers have gone and gathered up all of the entries for this month put them all into my Lightroom catalog, organize them all in a neat and functional way and crop them to the image itself. So as always, we can't go through every single image in this review. We have to group them into categories and kind of discuss the categories as a whole. So on my screen right now are all of the entries that were eligible to be used inside of this month's challenge. You can see that we've got a real variety of different things going on. I have gone through and categorized them. If your image does not appear here, please do not send us an angry DM or an upset DM or a sad DM. The reason why it's not here is because we couldn't see it for some reason or another or because the image was not entered correctly. So um, if you need to go back and revisit the rules on the blog post, previous blog post, and uh, you will basically be able to find out what went wrong. If your Instagram profile is private, then we can't see it either. So yeah, your image won't be here either. Okay. Like I said, this month that we've gone through is the white month. We've got all sorts of different things in here. The only criteria for images to be submitted for this month is that the photograph had to be of something white or contain a lot of something white. One of the main stipulations that I said, an example that I used in the kind of introduction for this topic was the subject could not be just light in color. It couldn't be a golden retriever, for example. It had to be of something that was white or contained a large portion of the image that was white. White, okay, so that will help to explain some of the decisions as we've gone forwards and this challenge was a really good test of your highlight control. So highlight control is often overlooked by beginner and amateur photographers and it's something that professionals will have a really, really, really strong handle on. So we do not allow any clipped whites in images unless it is deemed intentional. So one of the main criteria for us for this month that was that we would not have clipped highlights anywhere in the image unless it was a deliberate isolation. Okay, does that make sense? So if it's isolated, that just means that the background is non-existent, is white, right? Pure white. So if it was an intentional isolation, then it's okay. If it wasn't, then it's not okay to have clipped highlights. Now, Instagram does compress. So you guys needed to be really, really careful that you didn't overlook your highlight control and leave them even a little bit too close because it would mean that they would be clipped afterwards. So on the screen, you can see everything that was entered. I want to just cover off what's not moving forward straight away. So these images are unfortunately not moving along into the charge because the subject is not white. There is not something that's predominantly white in the scene. And so that's why these images are included. So if we look at everything that is left in the pot here, we have what we can run through. Now the groups are, we're going to kind of keep to as normal as possible, but there is an extra deviation in the color groups so that we can add blown highlights into a category all on its own. Now, if you're new here, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon. The bell icon will give you a notification every single time we upload a YouTube video, which is every single week on a Friday at 12 noon UK time. We've only missed that deadline twice in our entire existence of over 200 videos. One of those was because our late queen passed away and so we postponed the video and the other one was last week because just didn't have my ducks in a row well enough and so it's 12.30 for that release. You can shout at me if you want. Okay, so first of all, we're gonna look at red group. Red group is a technical group. So red group is purely for technical situations that have arrived, arrived, arise, arisen, come about, I don't know happened, right? Technical things have happened. This one here on the left is just one where it looks like the focus wasn't or isn't where it really needs to be. If you're going to do an eye shot, please try and have the entirety of the eye that's in the shot in focus rather than just like the front corner or just the middle strip because there's just not enough there for us to grapple with for our eye. However, the rest of the image composition is really, really good. So super well done for that. This one for me, there's like ghosting happening and not in a Halloween-y way. So it just kind of looks a bit blurry and fuzzy and it messes with your eyes and makes you feel almost a little bit seasick when you look at it for too long, specifically in the background. So just something to be aware of for next time. So with the red group out of the way, we can whiz over and along to yellow group. These guys did such great jobs. I love the composition of all of these images. However, unfortunately, they do have blown highlights in them. So if we're going to use this one as an example here, the blown highlights sit on the subject. 
So do you see here we have these areas that are flagged as red? That's just because I've put my highlight clipping flag on over in Lightroom in the develop module. And so we can see that there are clipped highlights within this image. We need to make sure that they don't exist, especially on the subject. So that is yellow group. And we are gonna whiz through these reasonably quickly today. So um, on this one, there's blown highlights up on the flower top. This one, it's in the waves. And this one, although the subject itself is clean, there are blown highlights around the edges. And on the front side where there would be some shadow there I just would have liked a little bit more control but really well done you can see the white theme coming through so this group is more a retouching group for lack of a better explanation some of them like this one is so well controlled this is really beautifully done but the highlights are too hot here on the back of the subject really that needed to be held under control a little bit more if we go through for this one, I just wanted a little bit more grit and, and contrast coming through in that one. This one is blue, so the white balance is off on this one. The dog has got some blue toning happening around the eyes and the muzzle. So realistically, the photographer needed to shift the white balance on this one, ideally in camera, but if not, then afterwards to just get the correct white balance. This one, the shadows have just been lifted a little bit too much. They're not matted, but they are almost grayed out. So just a little bit of extra depth would have been cool, but it's a really nice moment and really well done for having these two sat on the same focal plane in this situation, because that's really difficult. So really, really well done for that. This one is just a little bit dark on the subject's face. This one for me there just isn't enough detail left in the snow it's not blown out it just needed to have a little bit more detail happening underneath the dog but very well controlled for a black dog in a white scene genuinely it's really difficult to do and you've done a really good job this one the highlights are controlled too much so there's too much control on the highlights to the point where the highlights are no longer highlights these highlights on the dogs that are white are now sat in the mid-tone territory so they're not even in the lighter part of the histogram and so they've been protected too much and in essence have become what we call muddy so the highlights have gone muddy within this image which is such a shame because it's a really cute pose of these two together okie dokie moving on we end up in blue group now everybody Everybody knows what blue group is. Blue group is posing of the subject, composition, and or the angle of the view, okay? And there's a lot happening in this group. I'm not gonna have the time to go through all of them, but something compositionally or posing wise is happening that's impacting the image in, in a more negative way. One that I really wanted to bring up is this one because I really liked this shot. I wanted to move it forwards into the shortlist because it's extremely well controlled even in what looks like a difficult lighting situation. And I think it's a gorgeous image of a horse's eye. However, the eye sits actually on or around the midpoint in the image. And if the photographer had have shot this or cropped it differently so that the eye fell in the upper kind of third of the rule of thirds. So if you're struggling with composition, guys, go ahead and watch the composition video, which I'll link above. That will help, especially with this shot for improving it further. So unfortunately, just needed that little edge of a difference here. This one also is so beautifully done. I love this architectural image. I think it's really good. It's just the human is pointing to the left and that foot is so close to the left hand side of the image that it pushes us out and we get stuck in this corner. It's not something you could control unless you asked the human to pose in a certain way. But realistically, we could have done with having less of the right hand side of the image and having a little bit more on the left to just give that human leg a little bit of room to kind of nudge into. That would have improved this so much. So everything else in here is compositional or posing. Let me pick up a posing one. So this one is a posing situation. The, the dog just looks kind of tired, a little bit kind of disinterested. There's not a lot of attention happening there aside from in the eyes. And so the pose itself has not assisted with the overall success of the image. And then if we go for a angle of view one, the angle of view we're looking kind of down on the subject, if we'd got to their level, then it would be a more successful image. And I want you to remember these ones that have the dogs in the white sheets holding something or um, around something because we see almost a progression of success of this kind of a shot as we move through the shortlisting. So remember that in your head. So for this photographer, just really would have liked them to have got lower down, um, potentially even coming closer to provide a different type of shot with this setup because a lot of them just kind of look the same and so they lack impact. 
that makes sense. Some beautiful shots in here just needed some either more room around them because we're too tight or maybe the center of interest for the viewer where their eye goes is towards one edge of the image and really we needed more room around that area or maybe there's just a little bit too much space above or below the shot and we could have done with a little bit more in the opposite direction. So there's a lot happening in Blue Group this month. Really great shots, love them, really, really do. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous shots great potential in this group great potential so then we move into purple group which is where everybody hates to be and i feel like everybody shouldn't hate to be in here so these are images that have met all of the different criteria points right they show a good standard it's probably what we would classify as a really solid professional work okay is probably what we would put in this category so images that achieve good technical skill, highlight control in this instance, composition, posing, um, the angle of view, the lens choice for it, the lighting in the situation, all of that is really good. It just didn't hit that next mark moving up. And I want you guys to all look at the images in the screen here. And there's a couple that I would have loved to move forwards further. But look at the images that are on the screen here and then look at these images which is my shortlist. So these guys have gone that next step up, right? Then they're kind of on that next level up where we'd probably classify it as somewhere above professional standard, depending on what niche you shoot in. And these guys have all taken the challenge topic and run with it, either because the subject is white or because there's a lot of white happening within the scene. And there's some really, really, really strong entries in here. I've made a conscious effort to not be specific or selective on a certain style of work, because I know that's a frequent comment, I'm not going to say complaint, but a frequent thing that we get here is that I tend to pick my shortlist based on what I personally prefer. And of course, that's going to happen because photography is subjective. But we also do look at these individual criteria points as well. So we have on here some really great images because we actually have almost similar situations happening. And for each one of those, hopefully, you can see or compare with what we've seen before and kind of rank them seems brutal but it's kind of what happens so we have here two dandelion heads right they're both the same subject realistically they're just done differently okay we have here two what we would classify as landscape shots they're both the same thing in terms of like the niche or the style but they're both done differently Okay, does that make sense? So you have the the ability to compare, and especially with this one with the other dogs in sheets setups, you have the ability to compare and rank. And I'm gonna just show you this in a little bit more detail. So if I was to go ahead and find all of our dogs in sheets, you can see that it's the same thing that's being done, but the execution is different. Okay, does that make any sense? I'm hoping I'm making some sense because this is really, really important stuff. So this is where you have that deviation. Just because it's a great shot doesn't mean it's going to win something. So it has to have that extra little bit of je ne sais quoi, which to be fair, I don't even know what the translation of that is. So I'm hoping somebody can translate for me. But these images have that extra little bit different. And that's what makes an image, if you were going to enter competition or something like that, that's what sits them above everything else. So they have all of the basics nailed and correct but then they go extra or they do something that's not been seen before. They have something that's unique and they show additional creativity and that's what sets them up. So hopefully that makes some sense in terms of understanding the outcome. So we end up with this shortlist. And of course, right now I have to work out who gets the pins. So we have a gold pin, a silver pin and a bronze pin to give out. And those photographers, the creators and the images that they've submitted are the ones that have everything nailed and then have gone extra. They've gone above and beyond. From these images that we've got on the screen, who would you pick as your gold, silver and bronze? So we've got top row left to right, bottom row left to right, because I would be really, really interested to know. Please put your own picks down in the comments below. And what we'll do is we'll all look at everybody else's picks as well and see how close I got to yours. So in this group, I really like everything that's in here. All of these could be super, super, super top level pieces of work. But what I'm looking for is uniqueness and the almost perfection in terms of the execution, in my personal opinion. So they've done everything well. We just need that extra bit. And for me, there's some 
images that stand out above the rest. They resonate with me, they make me feel something and therefore then they then have more impact. And so those images for me are going to be this one, this one and this one. I just think that they sit at that extra level that's even higher. So if I was to go ahead and star those and bring those together on the screen, this is going to be the people who will get bronze, silver and gold based on everything that I've just said in terms of walking through the process. And so now we have to actually distribute those pins. And the white element of this is really important. So this one has the white sheet. It's extremely well controlled. It still sits in the highlight category, in the highlight territory. This one, the whites and the depth of field just are perfect for me. I think that they're gorgeous, show the depth of the object, which is actually really heavily detailed. And I think it's been really well processed as well afterwards. So we have this one, which we've discussed already. The lighting is good, well controlled. It's an interesting concept. Even stars in the background of this to go with the moon, which I think is just that extra level of creativity. And then we have this one, which is just for me, it's, it shows the movement in the place without having that movement in the place. And is this something that I would change or uh, amend for the future? Yeah, there is. There's maybe some tiny little bits that I'd like cleaning up, um, maybe some little bits that I'd like tone differently, but there's no dust spots. It's all correct. And the toning of it is very cool and it's beautiful. I'd have it on my wall. So we have these. So who is going to get the gold pin? And even when there's only three on the screen, it's still freaking hard. This is like sometime later, dot, dot, dot. Okay, there are just a few things I'd just love cleaned up in this one that would just make it top draw perfection for me. But the strength of it elsewhere, I think is just gorgeous. It's just so good. It's so well done. In this one, if we look at it, the moon is almost a little bit too distracting. And I know the creator of this will not hopefully be upset by me kind of commenting and looking at things in additional detail. Uh, but I think it's been really, really well done. This area under the neck is just a little bit distracting for me. And then this one, if anything, and I've just loved a little bit more grit, a tiny little, tiny little bit more space on the left hand side or rotating the stem around just slightly to give it a little bit more symmetry. But then the fact that it's not symmetrical also makes it more perfect because it's more natural. So this is getting deep. This is getting like real deep in terms of our discussions on this. We need to give these pins away. Okay, so who's gonna get the gold pin? I'm gonna go with. I don't know why I wince and then close my eyes when I'm going to do something. Gold, silver and bronze in the reverse order. So let's see who has shot these images. Okay, guys. So that is the creators of the shots. So we've got Danny Boy Cornish Lad, which I just think is a great Instagram handle. So this was shot in Cornwall, which is gorgeous. We have Silver going to Ainoa, who is from Spain. And then we have Taylor Lucas Photography, who has shot this one. And I'm guessing that's in Virginia Water, Windsor Great Parks. Now, I don't know if that's Windsor Great Parks in England or Windsor Great Parks in Virginia Water, which is somewhere I don't think in England. So I'm not sure. Maybe we have international, maybe we have European, who knows? But it's huge, huge, huge congratulations to everybody who submitted for this month because I really think you've done so well in terms of controlling these blowing highlights, which always causes bother as photographers. That was very English, bother. So that takes us to the end of the white challenge. And you'll notice that at the start of this video, I didn't say that you could skip to the end for the next month's challenge because this is the point where we would usually introduce the next month's challenge. However, we're gonna take a little bit of a pause on the monthly challenges just for now, whilst we regroup and look at doing some other bits and pieces. So there is a pause on the monthly challenge. There is no monthly challenge for November, okay? And we will revisit that in the future at some point to see if and when we bring the monthly challenges back. But for now, you have a rest, okay? November is a rest chill out, 
enjoy it, spend some time with your family, spend some time with your animals if you have some, and really just enjoy photography. Don't worry about doing anything for challenges or anything for awards. It's the break in the season now. So take a breath, regroup, and we'll revisit next month. Replacing this video for next month because there would be a challenge review on the first Friday of the month, we're gonna just do something different. So hopefully you'll join us back for that and enjoy the break. It's kind of everything I need to cover off today. So I'll see you guys next week for a five minute Friday. And I just wanna make sure that you keep yourself safe and well. I know it's a tough time at the moment everywhere in the world. Uh, some places are going through worse situations than others. Just know that you are not alone regardless of what it is that you're going through. We are here for you guys. So if you do want to reach out, then please do. If you're finding it tough, then try and reach out to your community that you've got because it's uh, difficult to face some things if you're going through them alone. So don't leave yourself alone. Make sure you surround yourself with good people and I'll see you all again really, really soon.